हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू ऑनलाइन सेशन ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड एट्थ सिविक्स चैप्टर नंबर फोर द इंडियन जुडिशियल सिस्टम स्टूडेंट्स इन प्रीवियस चैप्टर्स ऑफ सिविक्स वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट द थ्री ब्रांचेस ऑफ गवर्नमेंट दैट इज द थ्री ऑर्गन्स ऑफ गवर्नमेंट लेजिस्लेचर एग्जीक्यूटिव एंड जुडिशरी लेजिस्लेचर इज टू मेक द लॉ द एग्जीक्यूटिव इम्प्लीमेंट्स द लॉ एंड द जुडिशरी प्रोवाइड जस्टिस द लेजिस्लेचर एट द नेशनल लेवल दैट इज एट द सेंट्रल लेवल इज कॉल्ड द पार्लियामेंट इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ द प्रेजिडेंट एंड the two houses of parliament that is lok sabha and rajya sabha and india's union executive comprises of the president prime minister and the council of ministers about legislature and executive we have already studied in the previous chapters of civics in this chapter we will study about the third pillar of democracy that is the third organ of government judiciary along with the legislature and the executive the judiciary too is an important organ of the government judiciary works to give justice and thereby helps in removing injustice in the society and establishes a healthy society students the judiciary is that branch of the government that interprets the law settles disputes and administers justice to all citizens but before that let us understand why giving justice is necessary students every person is different from other our way of thinking our ability to understand our opinion thoughts our view points beliefs differ from person to person sometimes if people are tolerant they can avoid having conflicts but sometimes if there are differences of the opinion then it may lead to conflict such conflicts need to be resolved with the help of law that is judicial machinery and that too in an unbiased manner that is without any partiality such conflicts should be resolved impartially and with the help of law that is judiciary conflict of interest may arise between individuals and the government sometimes decision or law made by the government may seem unfair to people and they may approach the court for justice students government runs the country according to the provisions mentioned in the constitution the basic principles and the laws of a nation duties of the government and rights and duties of the citizens are mentioned in the constitution students why do we need a constitution because a constitution is an important law of a land it determines the relationship of the citizen with the government it lays down principles and guidelines which are required for the people the government tries to implement the objectives of social justice and equality laid down in the constitution even judiciary supports the government through its active decisions in certain cases the court can help to bring the weaker section of the society women children differently abled and transgender into the mainstream of the society 
when the common man benefits from the values of freedom equality and justice it leads to the widening and deepening of democracy this is necessary for the strengthening of the democracy students you know that india is a democratic nation democracy means the constitution has given the citizens of india the power to choose their own government democracy means the power of the people we have right to vote after the age of 18 therefore when the common man benefits from the values of freedom equality and justice it leads to the widening and strengthening of the democracy the rule of law is protected by the judiciary the law treats everyone equally rich poor forward backward men or women all are equal before law and that is clearly expressed through judicial decisions judiciary helps to protect the rights of people conflicts are resolved in accordance with law now let us understand the structure of the judiciary india is union of states the center and the constituent states have a separate legislature and executive but there is only one judicial system for the whole of india there is no division of courts between the center and the constituent states this means that judiciary in india is an integrated system integrated means combined the supreme court is the apex court means the top and the highest court under which there are high courts the high courts control the district courts following which there are lower courts which are at the bottom of this structure now let us study in detail about supreme court the chief justice of india heads the supreme court of india the president appoints the chief justice of india and other judges of supreme court and the senior most judge of the supreme court is appointed as the chief justice so students who is the head of the supreme court of india the chief justice of india heads the supreme court of india and who appoints the chief justice of india and other judges of supreme court the president the president appoints the chief justice of india and the other judges of supreme court the judiciary should not work under any kind of pressure the independence of the judiciary is maintained so as to enable the judges to fearlessly carry out the function of giving justice for this purpose the constitution has made the following provisions the constitution lays down the eligibility criteria for the judges eligibility criteria means capability according to their capability judges are appointed in supreme court a judge of supreme court has to be legal expert or one having served as the high court judge means an experienced advocate is considered as eligible judge for the supreme court and these judges are appointed by the president so that any political pressure can be avoided so students to be the judge of supreme court he or she must be a legal expert or one having served as a high court judge or an experienced advocate judges enjoy security of tenure 
they cannot be removed from the post for trivial reasons or for political motives trivial means not so important reasons the retirement age of judges of the supreme court is 65 years and for the high court it is 62 years the salaries given to the judges are drawn from the consolidated fund of india consolidated means whatever funds are available with the government of india no discussion takes place in parliament related to the salaries of the judges so students what is the age of retirement of the judges of supreme court it is 65 years and the age of retirement for the judges of high court is 62 years and who appoint the judges judges are appointed by the president personal criticisms cannot be made on judges for their acts and decisions means no one can disapprove the judgment given by the judge their decision is the final decision if any one tries to criticize then it is considered as a punishable offense this not only protects the judges from misguided wrongful criticism but also preserves the independence of the judiciary this help the judges to give proper and fair decision the parliament cannot discuss the decisions of the judges however it has the right to remove the judges from their position through the impeachment procedure students if in case any judge violates or disregard or disobey the law the parliament investigates and passes the resolution of impeachment with majority votes so however the discussions of salaries of judges are not taken place in the parliament and the parliament cannot discuss the decisions of the judges but it has the right to remove the judges from their position through the impeachment process so students these were some of the provisions which are made by constitution related to the supreme court students in next session we will continue the same chapter we will study about judicial activism about high court about district and lower courts